cocoa beans. Africans still ran their own farms, but British companies like Cadbury's held the real power. Their standards of quality are so high that nowadays the Gold Coast natives refer to the best of anything as Cadbury quality. To keep costs low for British buyers, the government fixed the cocoa price, though it wasn't presented in quite that way. All the cocoa nowadays is bought by the government, so that a steady price is given to the farmer and he's protected from the violent price changes which used to occur. Anima Sifu grew up on a cocoa farm. There were a lot of British companies in the cocoa business. They sent their agents out to buy cocoa from the villagers. We didn't have our own scales for weighing the beans, so we were really cheated by the agents. We had to accept the prices they gave us. The price was set by the British, and we had no say. Our hands were tied. The Europeans needed the Africans for the work they could do. They were in no hurry to give them full political rights. At best, the British and French thought Africans might one day run their own internal affairs. But it might take 50 years. The Belgians and Portuguese couldn't conceive of this ever. The aspirations of Africans themselves changed after the end of the Second World War, which altered everything. Colonial troops had fought alongside the British to defend other parts of the empire. They became more aware of the world. From the jungles of Burma, tough veteran West and East African troops arrive at Bombay on their way home. And their fighting skills struck terror into the Japanese. They were masters of jungle warfare. They'd learned something else. In India, they'd seen the nationalists challenging the British. Geoffrey Adurma returned to the Gold Coast with a new insight. Well, the Indians were very, very political. They were very political. Uh, we had conversation with some of them. They said, why are we fighting uh, uh, for Britain? Then we say we are fighting for world freedom. So they ask us, are you yourself free? He said, no. He said, well, fight for your freedom first. As I said, this had a very big impression on the Goku soldiers. Me especially, uh, it had a big impression on me. The African struggle for self-rule, which would soon spread to other parts of the continent, began in the British colony of the Gold Coast, where only 5,000 Britons, mostly traders, lived alongside 2 million Africans. Trouble began when demonstrations led by army veterans turned into violent riots, and 29 were killed. The protests were turned into a mass movement by Kwame Nkrumah, a charismatic campaigner known as Iron Boy. He founded a political party and told Africans, we have the right to govern ourselves. Following Gandhi, he asked Africans to take direct action and demand self-rule immediately. He organized a boycott of British goods and a general strike. The British saw him as a dangerous firebrand, probably under communist influence, and put him in prison. The jailing of Nkrumah gave a new impetus to the campaign to replace rule by the governor through African chiefs with an elected government. There is victory for us. Forward, ever, backward, never. In the name of great CPP, there is victory. Komla Bedema, Nkrumah's friend and fellow worker, ran the party in his absence. To prove not only to the colonial uh, uh, officials... I had to organize the party around the country at the same time as keeping the machinery of the party going. But we did it all. 
And to help us do it, one of the tools I used was to have a full life-size photograph of Nkrumah made in, into three parts so that it makes a, a decent small parcel. And this I carried around as part of my paraphernalia for the campaign. Nkrumah's body is in jail, but his spirit is going on. Now, how can we not vote for such a man? The mass action brought results. With the colony in ferment, the British finally agreed to a general election. They hoped Nkrumah would lose to more conservative opponents. In 1951, the Gold Coast voted for the first time ever for their own local assembly. There were few white voters. Because of the climate, few Europeans stayed for long or settled in the country. Nkrumah's party won a landslide victory. Reluctantly, the governor had to release him from jail. Now Nkrumah would fight for complete independence. A year after Suez, their retreat began. The people of the Gold Coast had had their own assembly under the British, but not independence. In 1957, they became the first black Africans to get complete freedom. Leaders from East and West came to Accra to see the handover. Vice President Nixon represented the United States. He arrived with a delegation that included civil rights leader Martin Luther King. A new order is coming into being and an old order is passing away. It seems to me that uh, this is fit testimony to the fact that eventually the forces of justice triumph in the universe and somehow the universe itself is on the side of freedom uh, and justice. The British were proud of the peaceful nature of the transfer. For Dr. Nkrumah, main architect of Ghana's independence, this is a day of fulfillment. The longing to be free, the need to be free, these are part of the rightful heritage of man, a heritage denied to colonial Africa until now. The Gold Coast was renamed Ghana, with a parliamentary system modelled on Westminster. Committing themselves to civil rights, the new government put up a huge commemorative arch. Here, but a handful of years ago, men laid down their lives for a cause that was not yet won, for freedom, for justice. Kamla Bedema had been with Nkrumah from the start. Now he shared the glory. And in the uh, subdued light, we mounted the platform and were all ready when the lights all went on at five minutes to 12. With me standing on the right hand of side of Nkrumah, everybody was happy, the cheering, probably is still resounding, but we don't hear it. At long last, the battle has ended. And thus, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. From now on, there is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing all of us. I want you all, those who have hats on, to take off your hats and let the band 